dummy run from Logan Hughes, good captain Carl Hutchinson, enough room and space to deliver a cracking cross into the back post, pinpoint accuracy right to Nigel Mastina, who also goes back to that point that um, it's been set by two managers, your manager has said it this week, my manager, uh, Tottenham's manager has said it this week, they don't know what a handball is. Hello! Yes, it's another one, Michael. Another podcast. Uh, this is Corby Town TV. Uh, I'm Chuck. This is Michael. Cheers, Michael. Yeah, it is. It is. I've looked at him, and it is him. Yep. So uh, yeah, here we are again, and uh, wow, it's all been happening in football, isn't it? Nobody likes VAR anymore. Uh, if anybody did in the first place, we're not going to talk about VAR because it doesn't get involved in our in our league in non-league football level. So um, what's just happened in real real life is uh, Corby played out a nil-nil draw here versus Lie Town. Not the most exciting of games. One decent shot on target. A couple of late chances maybe. Corby could have edged it but uh, didn't. And um, you can watch. If you go back to the previous thing, you can go and look at all the highlights there. But um, Michael's just said to me that you're, you're, you're moving also, because these are on YouTube, aren't they? But you're yeah. also putting them on YouTube Music, so you can just listen. Yeah, we're, we're, we're um, developing that. Um, there is a... Um, if you go onto YouTube Music, if you're on it, and then put in Corby Town, it should bring up the playlist. Now, when it brings up the playlist... There is an option there for audio only. Now that's how it works, yeah. So it will just play the audio for you and not the video. So Which is handy because yeah. like, some people be saying, "Oh, I don't, I don't want to watch it. I just, I can't think why they don't want to watch it. We're beautiful people, yeah. um, but they just want to hear." Yeah, and that's right. And um, there's a couple of things in doing that. Then. You know, when we do like highlights and that, we'll do voiceovers, yeah. you know, while we're in the studio, we'll give her, um, opinions and, you know, whatever. So it kind of makes it more comprehensive instead of uh, going through a podcast and then five minutes in showing highlights yeah. and all they can hear is the crowd. <laughs> so we're going to do that and uh, hopefully, you know, it will be better. Yeah, I, I, we're just thinking about you, the listener, the viewer, the watcher. Um, but, and of course, because we're thinking about you, the viewer, the listener, the watcher, uh, please subscribe and like and hit the notification button and share, share for crying out, just share, just show it to your nan and make her watch it. Um, and uh, you're saying if, you, if you know somebody that isn't got, hasn't got a laptop or, or, or a phone, an, an up-to-date kind of uh, a phone, where you can watch these things. You share it with them. You know, there's some old people in the stand. They've never seen these podcasts. Yeah, share. Yeah. So, um, uh, sharing makes the world go round. Can I just say one thing? Go on. I, from, I can speak for both of us here, I hope. From the both of us, it means an awful lot. Since we redeveloped this channel, um, in the first nine years, we had about 900 and... 20 30 subscribers since we re kicked it off and rebooted it and everything like that. We've added 450. Wow! So, from the both of us, I'm sure we'd like to say thank you very much. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for enjoying it. There's not a lot of feedback. I'd like a little bit more feedback, Chuck. Why are you wearing that hat? That kind of thing. Um, or, or more importantly, you were talking nonsense. Were you even at that game? I've seen that a couple of times come up on Twitter. <laughs> Were you even at the game? And having written the, the non-league paper report this week, you know, it's it, it wasn't the best of games at the weekend. Um, and we interviewed Gary after the game. Yeah. And he's, 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 you know, he knows what to do. And I'm sure he's got plans. And he's got people that he can turn to and people he can bring in. And I think um, there'll be a few more changes at the club, I'm sure. So we're just looking at that and uh, we'll bring you any news we've got. But at the moment, it looks like we're going to have kind of the team that played on Saturday here on Wednesday night. So that is uh, last week uh, was the broadcast about the girls game and yeah. the ladies game. So um, we're watching those numbers come in and the people that are watching it. And if you're watching that or you watched that last week, please share it, especially if you're one of the girls in the team. There was quite a bit of footage in that, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, yeah, and again, it was my idea, like I said, about putting it out on YouTube 
uh, music me and Chuck talking over the game so therefore people will understand what's going on the, on, on the pitch um, and we've still got to bring people in from the disabled team that are playing here called Town that are disabled um, but yeah we, 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 we need to focus on the first team it seems that they seem to need the help um, so there was a game at the weekend we don't know how that's gone on but after that the next home game you will see after the broadcast of this podcast will be at Steel Park as Corby Town take on Bed oh, Worth is it Bed Bedworth? Bedworth United. Did I read that? It is Bedworth United. Yes, yep. the Greenbacks, all the way there from Bedworth, next door to Nuneaton. Um, I obviously, yeah, Gary picked up the fact that we'd been trying to get a keeper from Nuneaton, but uh, yeah, that kind of fell through. But I did think that our keeper uh, Thomas um, Brakowski, he played all right. He pulled off a couple of great saves at the weekend. And uh, I gave him the man in match because I didn't think there was anybody really? else. Played. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think there was a couple of times when corners are swinging in in the second half, they put them under pressure and I think he, personally, I felt he struggled a little bit. Um, he, and that was the only bit that mm. I felt, you know, the, there was a goal disallowed where obviously it was a foul on uh, Thomas. Um, but... Yeah, or Tomas, I don't know Thomas, how you yeah. pronounce it. Because I did see the interview with the Lie Town manager, and uh, they were happy with the point. And I just, this, this just annoys me. The, the teams that come away mm. to play football matches and they're mm. happy with a point. Mm. You know, it, it just turn up and play football, you know, rather than, oh, we're going to sit back and park the bus. Yes, yeah, so then that's the, the, the you know, they're going to come here probably not knowing an awful lot about what the ground's like, got here and look at the pitch and go, my word, you know, um, yeah. But um, I will say that uh, at the start of that game, um, I think it was uh, Danny Setchell, their goalkeeper made what would I would think would probably be one of the saves of the season because that ball was going in all the way. <laughs> um, and he saved it and it went onto the bar. Yeah, he pushed it up onto the underside of the bar and it came out. I mean, what a save. Um, that was, for me, there was two good moments. That was one of them. And then, checking off, Chris Oti did a great spin in the box, but unluckily it went yeah, wide. Yeah. For me, they were the... Best two moments of the whole game. Uh, yeah, I mean, you put out your highlights package, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I was surprised you got as long as you did out of it. So. <laughs> I had to really work at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is really important, because I've seen this day, it's only been released today, and that's and now I'm talking last week. So, do this because it's still open. Um, the Spirit of Corby Awards, I put a link out on yeah. Twitter, yeah. Uh, and this is to vote for the ground staff. I think it's it, it comes under the, the heading of voluntary workers. Yeah. Um, and so our ground staff are up there for a couple of awards. Um, so vote for them, please go to the uh, Spirit of Spirit of Corby Awards online. You'll find it all there. There's a couple of other players, a couple of other people that are linked to the club. There's a 14 year old girl. She plays for the under under or under whatever yeah. the girls team. So vote for her. And uh, uh, Lee, who's a scout. Vote for him because uh, first welcome scouts. I think they deserve. <laughs> they're good guys. They're good guys. He's done an awful lot in the community as Lee. So um, if he were watching this, he probably has no interest in football. But vote for him and all. But um, uh, I'm surprised I'm not up for a spirit of Corby Award. Quite frankly, oh, nobody yeah. knows what I get on with. Really, you drink all the spirits in Corby. I don't drink any spirits. <laughs> spirits are wrong. I don't mind a drink of tonic once in a while, but I, and I love a Bloody Mary. But um, and I may have one next week when I'm in the sunshine. Right, okay. So uh, yeah, but um, uh, uh, this is why I don't drink in Corby pubs because there's no ale in town anywhere. If you didn't see the last episode, please watch it. Towards the end, around about 16 minutes, you'll see the goals and some action from the ladies' match where they beat Long Buckley Reserves 7 0. Uh, great game, some wonderful goals in there. Please check them out. Now it's out there, you will only see any highlights from the teams that play for Corby other than the first team in these podcasts. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, so it gives you an idea. So any ladies team, any under 18s, will only see any highlights within the podcast. So, you know, please watch out and go and watch the last episode. When are you off to see the next uh, Academy game? 
the youth team game yeah. um, is, uh, is that Thursday? It will be the fifth. this Thursday, yeah, the 5th of October, um, which by the time the next episode is done, we'll, uh, we'll have a report and, uh, you know, we'll do that for you. But in between, what's happened is that the um, the youth team play Preetby United Foundation. Yeah. And we're going to go through and show you the highlights and have a chatter about it. Three, two, one. Corby got off to a tremendous start. Within minutes, uh, we're on the score sheet. Great play down the right-hand side. Dummy run from Logan Hughes. Good captain, Carl Hutchinson. Enough room and space to deliver a cracking cross into the back post. Pinpoint accuracy right to Nigel Messina, who... Oh, yeah, I, and that was one minute. Two minutes gone, one nil. Peterborough must have uh, uh, been a bit shell-shocked, I reckon, at that start. Corby come out of the box. Oh, yeah. uh, Corby dug down the right channels. Corby stiffened. Uh, stifled dead noble, you know. <laughs> Peter a bit shocked it seems, but uh, trying to do everything, playing out from the back, uh, through the channels, Corby's second goal came through, Shea Brown was working really well off, pressing from the uh, Peterborough's defence, Peterborough overplayed the ball, made a mistake, Shea Brown pounced on him, smashed the ball home, 22nd minute, 2-0. Yeah, great start, yeah. Uh, and there's the goal. Uh, Corby pushed on, applied more pressure, nicked the ball again, a final third. This time it was Adeline. What kind of name is that? Adeline Thomas, who fired home a great goal. Sorry, Adeline, I'm sure it's a lovely name. A uh, great goal, struck from the edge of the 18 yard box. Boom, 3 0, 28 minutes gone. Corby finished the half, 3 0 up. That's uh, half yeah. time. Turn around then, half the second half court. Saw Corby take the foot off the gas slightly and play with a little bit more freedom, not as much intensity. And at this point, um, mistakes meant it stayed 3 0 up. Peterborough played some good football second half after a different formation. And oh, well, they probably needed to change the formation around, didn't they? And uh, really look at what they were doing. Um, Subs, a couple of them were on the pitch, having a success with the ball, playing some nice football. Corby looks as if they were in control, swallowed up Peterborough's good play. The lads worked well on a new form date formation and the game was good to watch. Two teams playing some real nice football and, um, yeah, and testing each other continuously after a couple of subs with Corby. They freshened things up, the half progressed, Corby scored a fourth and final goal this time from a cross on the left hand side, saw substitute Harvey. Uh, Staniszewski uh, with a header home on the 90th minute. So a late goal to finish off the game. Good result for the Steel Men or the Steel Boys, whatever they call themselves, but that's the youth team. Yeah. And uh, you can watch the goals here as you are. That looks a great cross and a great header. So well done. Yeah, very much indeed. Um, just one quick note really. Um, Colin really wasn't happy with the start of the second half. You know, he really wasn't happy. They did take their foot off the gas and you know, maybe got a bit complacent, they let Peterborough back into the game a little bit, but they really didn't create anything, mm. you know. Is it, um, is it down to the fact that, is that Corby unbeaten so far this year? Yeah, season? they're still unbeaten, um, you know, obviously that will come to an end at some point, and... Um, maybe, it yeah. might be an invincible team. Uh, yeah, yeah, but winning is a good habit. And it's strange, though, I did see some of the players up here Saturday afternoon watching Corby Town first team. So some of the youth players are actually watching the, the, the main team, uh, the men's team. So that, that's nice to see. And I know that there was a couple of the girls players that were up here Saturday as well because they were yeah. the mascots team. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's great that the other teams come and support each other. It would be nice if more of the uh, supporters of the main team maybe went to some of the youth game. I think they'd enjoy it, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just come along and support. Um you know, um, we thought there was a decent crowd for the ladies' game, actually, but we're told that the figure might have been up near 150-ish. Wow. You know, um, you know, I'm sure somebody, I heard that somewhere, if that's reality, yeah. and that's unbelievable, yeah. really, but yeah, come and support each other. I, I have heard, because uh, I, I spoke to the ladies' manager on Friday night when I bumped into her, that, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's difficult for her now. In so, in so much respect that whereas before she maybe had 15 players to pick from, now what with the England team doing so well mm -hmm. and the higher profile of ladies football, she's now got 30 people that are turning up and she can make a really good team. So Corby Town's ladies team is looking really, really good. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's why they went out and battered Long Buckley 7-0. Yeah, yeah, but they did drop it down a division, didn't they? Yeah, well, they, they dropped down a division because there was an uncertainty about who they were going to get and who they weren't going to get. And, um, you know, it may prove to be a, a master stroke and hopefully they can win promotion. Yeah. But Time will tell. That would be nice. We can all jump on that bandwagon and go and support the ladies and uh, Absolutely. Enjoy, enjoy a promotion. Off right, I never thought for a minute that I was going to be this side of the camera, right? But since doing it, I quite enjoy it. Working with Chuck is unbelievably quite a pleasure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> unbelievably <laughs> quite a pleasure. <laughs> oh, he's cool. Oh. I'll he's take that backhanded compliment and no, wear it like no. a badge. He's made me feel more confident in front of the camera. Downside to that is sometimes mistakes happen from my point of view, being this side and not watching fully what's going on over that end, which is you can understand. This week there will be a difference in the audio from the first bit to this bit because I didn't press record on the audio recorder that these microphones take XLR leads straight into and then we sync that on top of the camera audio which isn't great. So we, I can only apologise, but instead of doing the whole podcast again, we're just going to put it out and then apologise now for the audio quality. So, um, so we'll put this probably at the start of the podcast. So you may have to turn it up a bit um, and then turn it down when this bit's on. So yes, yeah, rock and roll. Um, but yeah. <laughs> No, I think you can take elements. If you take too much elements uh, um, away, then you just make it cool. Uh, football's always been controversial. It's always had those moments through time. And um, I think that what makes it interesting. You know, like you say, everyone goes into work and on a Monday or whatever it may be. You know, it could be a Sunday these days. People work all different times and everything like that. And it's talking points, isn't it? It's things like that. But my belief, and this is only my belief, and I'm sure nobody else would agree, I do think these high-profile players should be not allowed to be able to put comments or not allowed to have um, social media accounts in, 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 in their own names um, when things come out i.e. the James Santo situation and many things. I just think the power is with the players too much and um, I think it's creating uh, disharmony within clubs and um, you know certain yeah. situations that's, that, are being That's created. that man management of the players yeah. and I think you leave it with the, with the gaffer and if our gaffer had problems with any players here after the game on Saturday tweeting anything that they thought was right or wrong, he'd be pulling them up. And I think that's the same. Should be. It's not it's the happening same. at the top level. Well, maybe think. because they think they've got too much money and they yeah. don't care. But, um, I mean, it also goes back to that point that um, it's been set by two managers. Your manager has said it this week. My manager, uh, Tottenham's manager, has said it this week. They don't know what a handball is. Yeah. They haven't got a clue. Yeah. And, and it goes back to communication. Referees, or maybe the league, aren't saying what a handball was. The rule was pretty obvious before. The rule's not so obvious now. Yeah. So please, somebody from the FA, somebody from the from the, uh, the Referees Association, come out and say, look, if you've handed the ball in the box, it's a penalty. Then everybody will go, right, that's the rule. Yeah. If, you, if it touches you, if it touches your hand, it doesn't matter, it's a penalty. And that's it. If it, if, if it, if, if, I mean, uh, Romero, it, it, it bounced off his hand over here. He's, over, he's looking over here, he's at his balance. Yeah. But everybody goes, oh no, he punched it away. He didn't punch it away, his hand's out here. So, uh, yeah, but it, it and, and I just remember the, the European Cup final, Scouts was against Tottenham, and the player chipped it up against a straight in hand, and it was apparently straight away. And you think, oh, that's, it's the rule, it's the law, but. Yeah, it's opportunist from the player who's gone, oh, chipped that up, bounced off his hand, we'll have a penalty ref. Two minutes gone in the game, killed off the game completely, and uh, we should be in the European Championship. <laughs> <laughs> there was one a couple of weeks ago. And, and, that's, and that's where it, it evens yeah. it out. You know, yeah. Scousers won a big trophy, yeah. 
Uh, and we beat him 2 1 at White Hart Lane at the weekend. <laughs> but yeah, so. there was one a couple of weeks ago, um, Forest, uh, a game I watched actually, beat Burnley, and um, I think it was one each at the time, and Burnley got through, and they scored a second goal. Um, the, I don't know whether you've seen that, where the ball came over the top of Sander Berge, um, and he went like that, you know, and it's, the, the, the reaction, his arm went like that, and then the ball went over the top of him. Now, the ball did deviate. Did it touch his arm down here? No, it didn't. But what did happen is their claim was it touched his shirt, so it's not handball. Now, <laughs> where's your arm at? Yeah, that was that was my thought, and maybe I'm wrong here. But if the claim was it touched his shirt, which is here, they were claiming it was. You know, your arm goes all the way up here. So, if you're playing in long sleeves, yeah, yeah. does that mean it's not yeah, handball? There's, there's always this thing when the ball's coming down, it bounces up, you knock it on with your shoulder, yeah. and you, you're yeah. free to go, because it, it's not a handball. But what he did, it's... when the ball came over the top, his arm went up and he went like that. Well, in that case, we're saying as well, we don't know what handball is, so yeah, referees, absolutely. pull your feet around, tell us what it is. Yeah. Either that, we'll just give every time the ball hits your hand in the penalty area, um, a penalty. Oh, where, where was the other incident? There was another one where um, the player went in to charge the ball on the keeper and the keeper got to the ball but took the player out but the ball dribbled up and it should have been a penalty quite frankly rather than because the precedence was given on protection of the keeper and not on the player that the keeper took out when he mistimed his kick kicking the offensive, uh, the, the offensive player offensive? That's right. Um, the attacking player. Um, so th th it's all... There's, there's no laws in football. There's no rules in football. They're all laws, and they need to be looked at. And we need to start adhering to them, and we need to make them pretty obvious. Um, so yeah, I don't want to blame the FA for. Anything, Did you see those things I sent you? Remember the two games? Uh, yeah, I the, the, mentioned the, last time about Plymouth, and I said it was when I was young, and it was 1976. What a year that was! The year of the hot summer. Yeah, the player I didn't mention that was playing for Plymouth, who went on to play for Ipswich and uh, England, was oh, um, Mariner. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I've actually found a piece from the Pilgrim Times, I think it is, and it's got George Best on the front. All oh, right, you know, so uh, I might put a, a photo of that one. Yeah, so if I can see it. I had a conversation last night about Ted McDougall, who was playing for Leeds at one point. Ted McDougall who played for many, many clubs. And I said, Ted McDougall, he ended up at Andover. It was his last ever game he played for Andover. Because he was at Southampton. And we looked it up, we got on a Wikipedia, and it's trivia, he played four games for Andover. Strange that. Call who played Andover four times in their history. Oh. I know that. I know these things. But so. Uh, First game I ever went to, I think, was Andover at the Walled Meadow before they moved the ground. So, uh, yeah, so hashtag when, Andover and all these fans. When they, um, if at the start of the game, mm. and they have pennants, you know, yeah. like some of the clubs do, 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 do does the um, Andover have to hand it over? <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible, and, sorry. And, and, and the weird thing about Andover, because you know, they, they used to wear a kit of black and, black and red, like the poppies. And um, that's the finale in there, poppies. Um, and then they were, they were originally called Andover Town, which was fine. You know, Andover Town Football Club was fine. And then they had to rebrand themselves and they came up with just Andover Football Club, which is, of course, the worst initials for any football club ever, isn't it? AFC. So, uh, yeah, uh, come on, we're rambling on now. We're rambling. We are rambling um, on. We're, so, we're, we're just trying to give you our point of views of the major talk of the wins within football, um, as well as Corby Town stuff. It's so maybe, maybe we need to bring in a, a, a fan that's going to rattle on and talk nonsense. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, if you think that you're a fan of football, a fan of Corby Town, um, and uh, maybe a fan of other football teams as well, please come on, uh, let, let us know, and we'll have you in, and we can talk and chat. And uh, people hopefully will find that interesting or at least funny or uh, at the moment annoying. Yeah, at the <laughs> moment, the ideal fans, any fans of Manchester United, come on here, and any fans of Rangers, come on here. 
um, and talk about what's happening at your particular clubs at this moment in time. Uh, well, Reg is the story there, manager, isn't they? Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and Manchester United, every meltdown. <laughs> it would be absolutely um, uh, wonderful, you know, how can you have uh, stuff like the issue with Mason Greenwood, the issue with Jaden Sancho, the issue with Anthony, the issue with Ronaldo, um, all things that are happening within a club that is just in complete meltdown. I'd be really interested to talk to any Man United fans, this is not a dig, that want to come on and give you your point of view. I, and be a Corby Town as well, you know, that'd be great. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm of the thought process that uh, they're up there with Everton and I want to see both of those clubs made relegated. I have not. Got a point to give? Please write it on the back of a cigarette packet and send it to us. Um, but we have to get back in our boxes and I have to take some medication. Back talking about Corby Town. Uh, we'll try and get a player in, we'll try and get somebody in. I know the ladies really want to come in and we'll have to chat with them and uh, about the good things that the, it being a member of the ladies team is yeah. about. Because yeah. I think that's important. And um, uh, there's other stuff that's happening within the community as well. So, yeah, all good. But uh, for this for this moment, with you, listeners, viewers, we're going to go. So, uh, yeah, remember, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and don't forget to follow. And follow, yeah, and yeah. share, share, right? share. Yeah. Yeah. good things. Right? Yeah. Um, and we'll be back with more uh, uh, Corby Town news, updates from here at Steel Park. And from the media centre, and uh, more nonsense about trained footballs. Well, and, uh, and one quick thing, oh, I'd, I'd like to think, thank Billy from the club shop who gave us this, which is uh, something to hang up, and it's all little bits of memorabilia which we're trying to put around the place. And if you have a, a, anything that you know you'd like to bring on the show, like an old program or whatever, and tell your story of it, that would be good. So yeah, that's some. Um, we can leave that line there. Yeah, well, yeah. I might have to bring my mug in because I've got yeah. cool yeah. mug, a couple mugs are available yeah. in, this, in the club shop. Yeah. If you need one of those things for a, a stocking filler for that uh, ridiculous time of year in December. So, uh, you yeah, know, that's what it's there for. If you want other details, we're trying to get um, card availability and, and go online so you can buy your kits. And that's what we're doing. Very useful thing indeed. See more kids, great to see kids walking around Cork Town wearing Cork Town shirts. So, um, and then the away kit is doing quite well, people like that. Maybe because it looks like some Rangers shirts, but I don't know. Yeah, so what we're saying is support your... Support your local club. Yeah, support your local club. Local football is where it's all about. Come and enjoy it. Cost you a tenner, and then obviously concessions and mm -hmm. under 16s or whatever. It's not a lot of money. Come up, you know... Come up, give it a try, enjoy it, get behind your local team. Come on, Steel Man. Uh, so, yeah, so from me, my name's Chuck, and from Michael, my name's Michael, we'll say <laughs> thanks for viewing, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.